Hey guys, it's Steph and No. Pretty Caroline. Oh, 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 stone cold stone. She was a when I started working at the dine. Oh, 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 serves us up a mind. To count your blessings, cuz it's telly fair, telly fair. Put you down. Trish. <laughs> Hi, I'm Trisha. I am an American skier. And I am on Steph's team and also skied for school. And yeah, we're super excited to be teammates this year. We've been friends for a while, but never on the same team. So yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, Trish and I kind of have raced together for a bunch of years. And it's always really fun having friends that are on either different like national teams or different teams or from different countries because you're not really directly competing with them in like a yeah. national team format, but you're still like competitors at races. So yeah. it's, it's really fun. And you like always see, we always see each other. Like we've done the same races for like six years now. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. I asked some people to ask questions on my Instagram. So these are some of the ones we got. They're mostly ski related. Some are like, a mix and since Trish also went to school and kind of balanced it that should be the perfect one to help me answer the first one diving right in my favorite how do you stay positive <laughs> when things suck this is really hard I personally feel yeah. like finding friends and like talking to other people about it is definitely yeah it definitely feels better helpful. when you're like don't feel alone with what you're struggling with and also i think figuring out how to stay positive like evolves with you because mm -hmm. for me personally i go through ups and downs like every single season and um like what worked one season to get out of funk might not necessarily work the next because for me it's like when i feel like things suck it's usually because i'm like skiing badly or yeah <laughs> the results aren't there um so yeah have like perspective outside of that yeah definitely taking a step back and being kind of grateful also for what you're doing but yeah. we were talking about this the other day actually <laughs> how yeah. like it almost feels like when you have a life kind of like ours where you get to do sports and you get to travel all over the world you feel like you're sadness or your struggles aren't really relevant because yeah. your life is so amazing it's like why am i sad but it's like whoa i'm like skiing in italy and it's sunny and i'm like sad because i made some bad turns like, <laughs> what's wrong with me um yeah. but that but then like you also need to think about like okay like i put a lot of like so much time and energy and like i care so much about skiing like that is valid that like it's mm -hmm. frustrating so like don't disregard your feelings or like being bummed. Just try to like identify them and try to find things that can get you out of that mindset. Yeah. And friends. <laughs> and friends. Yeah, friends are very helpful. Where do you ski during summer or fall training? Well, we're in Italy right now. <laughs> we're in Stelvio at a glacier, which is like very common yeah. for summer skiing. I feel like most of summer skiing is done in Europe and South America. Yeah. Or New Zealand, but oh, true. North with New Zealand. COVID, we haven't been able to go there. And even South America is kind of hard. So I feel like there's been a lot of glacier skiing in Europe recently. Yeah. Um, which is really nice because it's like sunny, um, but you're also yeah. skiing. <laughs> yeah, it's not like New Zealand where you go and it's winter time. Like it's still summer here. <laughs> we have a camp in Sasfe in Switzerland in August and September. And then I think most teams kind of go to Colorado-ish in, in the fall. for sure. Yeah. Somewhere in Austria, like, in October-ish. Yeah. yeah. Especially, I think, for when you're, like, World Cup, it definitely depends where the World Cup circuit is going. And same with Norams. Like, I think yeah. a lot of people, or with races, wherever your first race is going to be, I feel like that's generally where you, you do your, fall. like, final yeah, prep period. Are you intense. where you wanted to be at this point in your life? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so Trish and I are both the same age. We are turning, well, Trish just turned 24. Yeah. I'm turning 24 this year too. And um, this is a tough question. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> if you asked me, like when I was 13, if I'd still be skiing at 24, I'd have been like, no way. Like, oh my God, that's so old. But I like, I don't know. I don't really like think about like where I want to be in this many years. It's more like short term and... Um, like, I'm very happy with the decisions I've made. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, I don't know. 
probably wouldn't have guessed I would still be serious here. No, I I feel like I probably would have assumed that I had like gone to the Olympics because when you're young, you feel yeah. like 24 is really old. Yeah. But I mean, I still feel like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd think like, oh, I've been to the Olympics. I've like won World Cups and yeah. some people, yeah, that's true. I don't know. I feel like I'm almost at like a better, a better point because I've had different experiences than I initially thought and yeah. things didn't really go as planned. So now. Yeah, that's what it's like. You can't like plan. I no. feel like there's so many unexpected things that it's like just good to make the most like informed decisions like whenever you have to. Yeah, for sure. Otherwise for all you really disappointed. <laughs> yeah, young racers do not get discouraged if things yeah. don't go exactly how you think they're gonna go because we've both been on and off the national team. We've been at school, we've been out of school. Yeah. <laughs> like, you yeah. never really know. And like looking back, like I wouldn't do anything differently because you know, like that's, I also think not a good way to look at it because you never no. know, like it's just silly to be like, what if I did this differently? Yeah. Um, so yeah. No, I, yeah, I think I've definitely come to terms with where I am yeah. and I'm actually quite like proud of it. What is your strategy for staying focused? I'm assuming this means skiing. <laughs> <laughs> staying focused in life. Yeah. Focused for skiing, I think is something you really have to develop. Like I, when I was younger, I definitely had like 30 seconds of focus mm -hmm. and that was it. But as you get older, the more you work on it, I think it definitely, you develop it better. And I feel like I don't think about it in that way, but I think for training sessions, like to kind of narrow it down, I definitely have more intention <laughs> with like what I'm trying to get out of each day and like specifically each run. And this kind of ties back to like staying positive when things suck, because if you can just be like, okay, this run, I want to keep my hands up. Then it's like a very easy thing to be like, did I do it? Did I, did I not? Um, so yeah, just like kind of like narrowing down the focus, I think um, yeah. helps. Yeah, I also, I find that having trigger marks, so I know when I get to the start that I'm gonna need to think about something or I need yeah. to focus about something and yeah, that makes true. it easier than if you're trying to think about it like the entire day or yeah. like when you're on the chair the whole time because I think that's not realistic. Yeah, and I think every athlete's different. Like some totally. people need to be like focused like every single second down the hill and then others like that's actually not super productive. So it's more like, okay, when I'm in the start gate, I need to focus kind of right after you run, like think about it. Um, yeah. So it is different for everyone. Yeah, and I think coaches are, some coaches are very good at helping you focus and other yeah. coaches kind of, they yeah. give you so many pieces of information that it is hard to stay focused. So just really narrowing in on what you want to do that day or like that run. How do you mentally prepare for soft snow, tough conditions in a race course? <laughs> this is a good question because it got soft like halfway through a session today and I just did such a terrible job at like <laughs> thinking about how to ski in the soft conditions because it actually, it makes a huge difference. Like your line needs to be different, like your tactics, your technique. Um, so kind of practicing that in training and being like, okay, it's soft snow, like, what does this mean? How do I have to ski differently? Yeah. Um, and then it'll just, I think, be easier in races. Yeah, I agree. Trying not to feel like it's going to be a perfect day and know that it's not going to feel amazing because if you start focusing fully on the feelings, then you're really going to have a hard time and you're going <laughs> to, it's going to make you feel a lot worse than if you just keep in your mind that the snow is not going to feel great, yeah. but you focus on what you need to do. <laughs> Another good thing is realizing that like it sucks for everyone. Yes. And like, it, don't freak out. Like when you go over like a massive rut, like instead of being like, Oh my God, I'm sucking. Be like, okay. Like how to like, just think about like whatever your cue is like for those conditions. Yes. I, this actually was so relatable at us nationals this year. It was like the gnarliest snow for the GS. And when we were inspecting about halfway down the course, one of the coaches was like, just remember that no one is going to be having fun at this point. <laughs> and it was so true because once you got to that point, I was like, okay, everyone is having a hard time. Yeah. So just realizing that everyone is in the same boat. Okay, was it hard to balance school and skiing? Um, yes, but I also think that like having to balance it 
like honestly taught me so much about like time management which sounds boring but like just how to be like effective and get so much more done than I like ever did without school yeah I think skiing also is one of those sports where in high school you're also missing a lot of school I found so mm -hmm. I was kind of prepared by the time I yes. got to like college it was not a shock that that is I was going to be doing homework on the road or in the van. Yeah, and you get good at like teaching yourself and like knowing how to do that. Yeah, time management is key. I think as dorky as it is, like keeping a planner or <laughs> having some sort of calendar because it is so easy to forget things if yeah. you don't. Yeah. Unless you're the type of person that can like photographically memorize all your stuff. But yeah. I think that the planners definitely saved me while in school. <laughs> do you ever wish you had a normal social life? <laughs> no because I got yeah. to hang out with Trish all the time <laughs> like you definitely go through periods where especially with social media you like see all your friends like together having fun um but I feel like this happened a lot more when I was young mm -hmm. and I don't know when you're young it's easy to like get caught up in like the grass is always greener but usually it's not yes. and like if you really like think that's so much more fun like go and try it and like see for yourself um but usually like yeah I don't know I was pretty good at realizing that I was super lucky to be doing what I was doing um yeah yeah I think going to normal public schools or normal high schools is definitely hard but I think as long as you know what you want I think in high school I even knew yeah. that I wanted this to kind of This kind of like relates to the question for tips for balancing sport with regular life so I don't have feel FOMO. Um, <laughs> because I don't know, I just think that like when you decide to commit to skiing or like whatever level you are at, um, like you should know why you did that and feel good about that and like maybe write down like why you did it um so that when you are like second guessing it you can be like no this is like super important to me and I want to be doing this and like yeah um yeah yeah I also I think that's something that helps keep it in perspective is the fact that there is you do have a life after sports yeah because I think even recently this has started getting into my head where I'm like wow when I'm in my 30s like I'm gonna have friends I'm yeah. gonna have a normal life <laughs> probably have a normal <laughs> job <laughs> And I think yeah. that helps because it makes things seem less drastic in the moment. But yeah, dealing yeah. with FOMO is hard. I know I used to struggle with it a lot more. Now that I'm very confident in my yeah. decisions, I feel less FOMO. But yeah. I totally agree with that. I think that as I've gotten older, I've just really leaned into, this sounds kind of silly, but taking pride in my commitment to skiing. Yeah. And this is something I am super happy to be doing, want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and going to school also like was a big thing in helping me realize that and have the clarity to be like, no, I actually really want this and like I'm proud yes. of like the commitment it takes. And I know at the end of the year, like regardless of the results, the thing that feels the best is knowing I committed super hard to something and like gave it everything I had. And I think that's super unique too. Yeah, I think school is definitely gives you a different perspective because you're surrounded by so many different people who yeah. have different goals and different reasons for going to school. So that also definitely gave me the reassurance that yeah. I really wanted to see yeah. and that was like yes. what I really wanted to do. I, yeah, I actually think that's the biggest lesson I learned from school. This one's funny because Trish and I are from different countries, but how do I make friends with skiers from other countries? <laughs> Steph is actually so good at this. It's all about her answers. I think that just putting yourself out there, I've never really had an issue branching out from my team, mostly because I rarely had a full girls team. Like most of the time there's only one or two of us and odds one of us was injured was really high. So. Mm -hmm. I really put myself out there when I first got into FIS and tried, like I met Trish and Nina and all Alice when I was in yeah. like second year FIS. So yeah. I think just being confident that these are your people, you're all kind of in the same situation. So they're the ones that you should really be willing to reach out to. You're also like, think about it. You never, when someone else comes up to you and it's like, 
hi, like, how is your run or something? You never think like, oh my God, I can't believe that person like came yeah. to talk to me. <laughs> so like, if you are more shy, yeah. like it's good to remind yourself that like, you like when people come up to you. So like, you should try it too. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I also think the more you travel with skiing, you interact with so many different teams and it's really fun yeah. to see either people's different perspectives on it or their different experiences or like a lot of the similar experiences yeah, because so similar like every yeah. nation yeah <laughs> yeah you all kind of go through the same thing especially the higher up you get so yeah just be willing to put yourself out there don't be shy because yeah you literally see the same people like, yeah every year <laughs> yeah it becomes weird if you like don't say hi <laughs> yeah. yeah it's really fun having friends from other countries have you ever felt like you wanted to be done skiing <laughs> <laughs> i feel like I've had moments, but never ever been like, I'm so over this. Mm -hmm. But like, this goes back to the highs and lows. Like, mm -hmm. there, at least for me, there have been like so many more lows than highs. And just like <laughs> knowing that and like knowing that you just kind of have to keep grinding. And um, yeah, but it also goes back to what I said about like just taking pride in like working hard and not really putting everything into the results. Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. I've never really felt like that I wanted to be done. No, I I honestly think that every time I think about what I'd rather be doing with my life, it always comes down to skiing or sports in general. But I think if you think about your life without it and you realize yeah. how different it would be and yeah. honestly. Also, <laughs> I think a big thing for me is like, I've always felt like I have so much more to give or like so much more potential which I don't know if that's like a super positive thing but like as long as I feel like I can keep getting better and like want to keep committing and like yeah um then I don't know yeah no I agree I I don't think I've ever been done with skiing maybe when I was like four and it was cold outside and I wanted chicken nuggets or something but I don't think I liked skiing when I was no. like five no my it's parents had like... to bribe me with freaking hot chocolate and french fries was there another sport you were good at that you had to quit for skiing you um yeah I really like soccer like I know I had to stop like doing premiere or whatever but it wasn't like ever a decision it just like kind of made sense it was like yeah I'm gonna do skiing but I do miss it a lot yeah um but I don't regret it no I remember in high school there was this weird phase where I was so obsessed with field hockey <laughs> and I like had all these epiphanies that maybe I'll go to a Canadian university and just play field hockey and, like, <laughs> and then I thought about it and I was like no <laughs> I'm not gonna run around the field all day <laughs> like yeah. I'd rather be skiing with my friends but yeah. yeah definitely had sports to quit but also I feel like you don't really have to like obviously you have to kind of quit them in a yeah. competition sense but maybe not in yeah in a fun way yeah also like, I played soccer until I was a sophomore in high school, so it wasn't like I oh, yeah. quit every sport at 10. Like, I, I did, <laughs> no, like, no. every sport for, like, as long as possible. Same, yeah. Like, I only quit gymnastics and field hockey, I think. Gymnastics in, like, grade 10, which is shocking, because I was 5'8". <laughs> <five, eight>. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't quit field hockey until I was a senior in high school, because you don't really need to, I feel like, a lot of the time. Yeah. Especially if you pick sports that are in the off season, it's definitely good to yeah be a dual keep sport. playing sports. I definitely think that helps a lot. Has, yeah, helped me with not being injured so much too. Not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last question. Comment if you want Trish to be in more of my vlogs. <laughs> she doesn't like when I vlog her, so <laughs> no, don't but, love it. But this was fun, and if you guys have more questions or if you think this was good, let me know. But otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Yeah, keep crushing it. Pretty Caroline.